Hi there, welcome back. As I told you in the last video, I'll be talking about uh, the specifics of the SP32 operation. And although we're not going to be using two microcontrollers, we're going to be using both cores. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to use both cores in an efficient way using the ESP IDF, the expressive framework. Many people get scared by not using Arduino, think the ESP IDF is way too hard. But I'm going to show you that it's actually really simple to use, the documentation is out there and you can make some really efficient, really fast code and in the end do stuff that is not possible doing by Arduino. So, let's go! This code right here you're looking at is everything you need to make two cores work with two interruptions with hard real time. So let me just explain. So start with the main function, of course, I configure some GPIOs. You don't need to care about this. I'm just configuring these pins to test the interruption timings and the built-in LED on the board. So nothing too interesting here. And here is everything you need to know to make a timer work. So what is in here? Well, first uh, I create this timer config here. I'll be using the same configuration for both timers, for the core 0 and the core 1. And remember that the main function always starts at core 0. So right now you're executing this at core 0 and then I set the alarm to true, so I enable it. And every time the alarm ends the counting, it just reloads. Here you make the counter count up and here we don't enable the timer yet. We want to enable it as a last step on the process so everything is configured the right way. We set the Prisk color here to 80. So let me just explain this. The ESP has internal clock of 80 MHz. So using a Prisk color to 80, the period you use on the timer will be the period in microseconds already. So it's just easy to calculate it by, by mind, you know, don't need to make some complex calculations. But you can change this number to other numbers to get fractions of microseconds, more precise timing if you need. And then you set this uh, interruption as a time interruption level. Then you have this timer that is initialized but it didn't start. So you create the timer now with these configurations and it's the timer zero of the group zero. So you have two groups and two timers per group. You're gonna use only group zero for now. The value of the counter is zero because you wanted to start it from the beginning of course. Then we register the interruption service routine or interruption function Again, timer 0, timer group 0, then we get the address of the function, that is right here. Is what we're going to execute every time the alarm of this timer goes up. Then you have a variable for the arguments you're going to pass to the function, I'm not going to use any. You have the interruption again, here I'm using the standard values from the tutorial from the ISP IDF. And here a pointer to the return value, again we're going to use any. So here's the most important part of the alarm. This is the part you set in what time it's gonna tick. And that is timer 0t. This is just a variable I created here in the header. So 0 is going to be at 20 microseconds and timer 1 at 10. I'm just gonna create two timers to show them operating in parallel on the oscilloscope later on. And since you're already here, these are the pins we're gonna use to synchronize with a GPIO or interruption functions. I'm gonna explain that later. Then we enable the interruption and we start the timer. And that's it. We have at a core zero an interruption. And as we want a hard real time interruption, it's gonna leave there running indefinitely. But now we have a problem. How to create an interruption at core 1? Well, when using the SP32 with RTOS, you're gonna learn that you only can create an interruption from the core you want the interruption to be in. So, if you want an interruption in core 1, you gotta create a task at core 1. So, there we set up an interruption, and then you can end that task, and then the interruption will be running there later on. If you want to stop that interruption, we're gonna need a core 1 task again. Just keep that in mind. So what I'm doing here is task create pin to core. It's basically I'm gonna create a task and I'm gonna run this pin to a certain core. Here's the number of the function I'm gonna call. The name, the RTOS is gonna keep logged on. If you read the logs of your SP32, you're gonna see that created. Here's the stack size. I just got magic number, all work and never give a second thought about it. So this is a pointer to the parameters. I didn't use any. Here this priority, I just kept that one because I'm not using anything in a parallel. If you want to use 
simultaneous tasks and interruptions. You're going to take a better look at this task. A pointer to the created task. I'm not going to use it. And of course, the core we'll be using in week one, core one, because we're core zero. After creating the task to create the other interruption, now we can delete this task, the main task. Of course, if you want to run a task parallel to this interruption that is not hard real time, it's asynchronous, you can continue it right here. But I'm not running anything on core zero. The core zero is basically the core I'm using for the DEC interruption and I want to leave it completely free for the DEC to operate. So no task in parallel here. I can end the main and go to core one task. So we're going to repeat the same process that we did at core zero for the interruption of core one. I'm going to use another timer, of course, timer one from the group zero. And it's the same. Only now, at the alarm value, I'm going to use timer 1, that I set a different number, right here. It's half the period from timer 0, so you're going to have double the frequency. And after creating that task at core 1, we can finish it, of course. You might keep this in the future if I want a task going parallel, which is going to be the case. And that's it. We have two functions being executed now, hard real time in both cores. Let's take a look at the function, what I did there. So, this might be overwhelming a little bit, but... Just relax and trust me, this is ultra simple stuff. The timer one that is running on core one is a copy of the timer zero function. So I'm not going to pay attention to the second one here. So this function executes every time the timer zero alarm ticks. What I basically do here that is important that you do, I clear the interruption status. So you need to do this. And then after I finished what is running on my interruption, I re-enable the alarm in the interruption. So when I enter, there is no risk this interruption is going to happen again. And after that, I re-enable it so it can happen again after I finish it. These two functions here, reg writes, or reg writes, depending how you prefer. These two are the functions that I'm using to set and reset the pins to measure the time for the interruption. So the interruption happens at every t microseconds, right? You're going to stipulate that variable as t because it can be 20, 10, 100, I don't know. The period of this signal is fixed, but the pulse width, so the time you stay on is variable, depends on what you're executing on the interruption cycle, okay? And it's important to measure that time so you know how our process is performing. And this is basically it. When you start interruption, I write this one, and I write then after I finish the execution, zero. And preferably it's gonna stay zero at a time, so you have this margin for jittering and different interruptions going in the RTOS and no interruptions gonna overlap each other. You can use alternatively, if you don't know how to use registers, GPIO set level. Super simple, don't mind this, okay? I'm just using these ones because I prefer to use them. These variables are created to use this kind of function, so again, don't mind them. The only important thing here is you call the function and it's an IRAM attribute, so it's running on RAM. You have this timer function at the beginning and this timer function in the end. In the middle, you do whatever you want. And that's it. I did the same thing for the timer one, running at the core one. And they are basically doing nothing right now, but setting the timer properties and setting and resetting the pins. So let's take a look at the oscilloscope. So right now I have this virtual oscilloscope that is actually just a mirror of what I'm seeing at my oscilloscope right now. So I don't need to record this with my cell phone and be all wonky. Now you can see a clear image of my oscilloscope and you can see core 0 20 microseconds and core 1 is running at 10 microseconds, so double the frequency and it's clear that it worked. Of course they are not synchronous because we created them at different timings. We could make them synchronous but for me it's not important right now and there might be a little bit of a jittering I don't know why the jittering is there, I'm still trying to figure that out, but for many processes of you, this code will be already working perfectly fine. Now that you created this time, you're gonna put functions in there and tasks, and it's important that this time you see here that is the on period, that right now is super, super small, it won't be bigger than the period itself. Otherwise, your interruption will be running, and it will be stacked with another interruption, and then it will be stacked with another interruption, and then you have a fail. Your ESP32 will reboot itself for protection, of course, and you can see that on the serial monitor. So 
every time you're gonna use interruptions like this and you're not use or don't have a oscilloscope to see what is happening always use a serial monitor i use termite but you can use whatever you want if the sp32 keeps restarting itself you have a problem probably by restacking these functions you need a bigger period for your sampling or to reduce the task it's doing inside of it when final observation i like to keep my code as modular as possible but at the same time i like to keep everything neat and tidy so what i do here and this is uh, an excerpt from the original program from the dac operation i call these two tasks the impact this have on performance is close to zero i didn't observe anything on the oscilloscope at least so i call these two functions here in another c file and there I program my functions and I completely forget everything that is in the main. So the main configures everything, the interruptions, the parallel tasks. And after that, I don't need to worry about it anymore. Of course, every time I implement something in core one or zero, especially in core zero, because it's the operation that is reading all the, the lookup tables. If you don't know what that is, I'm going to explain in the next video. So I'm running the sound engine on core zero. And every time I implement a function in there, I have to boot up the oscilloscope and observe if my timings are not exceeding the limits that I can operate on that core. So let's bring the oscilloscope back. If this would be the case, it's not, this is just an example, but we have here 20 microseconds to operate. In my synthesizer, I have 25 for the DAC and a thousand microseconds, one milliseconds to read the keyboards and do all the ADSR FM operations. But in this example here, you have 20 microseconds. If we include the jittering that is barely observable in the oscilloscope, and here is impossible to see, the software is kind of slow compared to the oscilloscope, of course, you have to consider the jitter and a margin of error, margin of safety, so you can work on that envelope. In this case here, jitter is almost new, so you can put like a 5% safety here, which could go up to 19 microseconds. And of course, my jitter here is zero, so if you got jitter in there, that number will be, of course, smaller. And this is super important with hard real time, never exceed the times of your interruptions. Another important consideration, if instead of ending the task that you started at main of a core one, you kept using it, which by the way is gonna... Did you see that? Sometimes it does that. I'm still trying to figure out everything about the SP32, but... Some mysteries, man. Where was I? That just broke my line of thought. Oh yeah, if you have a background task that is asynchronous, so that is not hard in real time, is running continuously, the more you use the interruption on that core, the less that task is going to execute. Because of course, you have one core, one background task, and an interruption task. So it's basically, it's running just one or another, not both. So you're going to choose carefully the let's say equivalent PWM value, like your duty cycle. It's not a duty cycle, of course, but the time we stay executing the interruption task has a limit, not only by the period you're using, but how much you want that core free to run the other task. And that's super important. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should read about uh, operational systems. That basically what I'm talking here. It's concurrent tasks and hard real time and all that stuff. So that's basically it. That's all it takes for you to make your ESP32 run. Two interruptions, hard real time, one each core. And by using these two interruptions, I'm gonna make one to read the keyboard and control ADSR and FM and other effects I can apply to my voices. And the water one, super short, 25 microseconds, 40 kilohertz, is gonna be used to apply values to DAC. So it's going to be my complete sound engine. Of course, if you're not interested in the med synth, at least I hope this video is useful for you, the ESP32 average user. If you know anything about the wobbly jitter that I get every single time I'm operating this, I presume it's something about other interruptions running on the RTOS. Please let me know in the comments. I'm still searching that out. I cannot find it, not yet. If I have any updates to the dual core part i will make another video but as far as i know this is working really good and the sound engine apparently has no problem running it i hope you found this entertaining i hope you learned something and if you have any comments or suggestions or questions 
comment down below. This is Madrigo, another chapter on the Mad Synth Addictive Synthesis series of videos. And I will see you on the next chapter that's going to be what is a DDS? Of course, running now on two cars. See you there. Bye.